Hi, it's wonderful to be with you again and to be able to share a reflection um, with you. Um, I met with a minister, a pioneer minister, um, yesterday it was. It was absolutely wonderful. I think it was my first um, face-to-face catch-up with somebody. I had a lovely cookie with a dime bar in the actual cookie, so that was a that was very good. If you ever come across one of those, I thoroughly recommend it. And anyway, in the catching up with with her, I um was we were just chatting about how he came to faith, and and I was saying about in terms of when I was a young person, how um I was just like completely over the top, kind of passionate about stuff. And I was sharing this story. Um, I was really I loved hockey when I was younger, and um, I played right back, and my mate Nia played left back. And I can remember walking past the language block on the way to the hockey pitch, ready for a game. I was about 13, 14, and saying to my mate, you know what, Nia, if me dying meant that hockey could continue, I would literally die for hockey like that, just so that it could keep going on. What a absolutely ridiculous um, kind of statement, but it showed you, it just shows you kind of that kind of level of um, passion and commitment that I, I had as an, as, as an adolescent. And I don't know if you have maybe a story or two that um, does make me feel so alone with my ridiculous um, impassioned kind of speeches that I would make when I was um, younger. Um, but we know that um, adolescence is a really kind of special time. Lots of things are going on in the brain. And um, a writer called um, Dan Siegel wrote a book. Um, it's called find it here. It's called um, Brainstorm, and it's the power and purpose of the teenage brain: an inside-out guide to the emerging adolescent mind. So ages twelve to twenty-four it is. And it's just a really fascinating book where he kind of unpacks like some of the things that are going on for teenagers during those adolescent years. He talks about this emotional spark, which is part of the essence of the adolescent brain. And this is honouring these important internal sensations that are more intense during adolescence, but they serve to create meaning and vitality throughout our lives. Now, obviously, everybody um, navigates adolescence differently. So these are kind of broad brushstrokes. We recognise that everyone does it differently in that way. But um, it really does for me ring true that adolescence is quite an intense and an intense time for young people for people and um and they are maybe more prone to adopting riskier behavior um and an example of that would be we had our four lads used to do some work in the community when we were doing building work on the church with scaffolding um i got a phone call from a neighbor telling me you've got four lads on your church roof um when i had a little chat with them about their risky behavior slash stupidity um they were thinking about actually seeing if a plastic bag could operate as a parachute obviously never you got hurt um, and there, there were some implications for what they did but um, yeah it's just that kind of sense of seeing the fun rather than the risk and we know also that adolescence is a time of pushing boundaries but it's not just in our maybe our experiences or in the work that we've done where we see some of this kind of risky behavior or the passion or the pushing of boundaries we see it in scripture too so we, so we have like Jeremiah, who was probably about 17 when he was called and commissioned by God. And we know that he was someone that spoke hard truths. He was unfiltered and he spoke the words that people didn't want to hear. And it got him into trouble. And we have Mary, who was a teenager. And then her song of praise shows us that she could see beyond the earthly reality of a teenage girl being pregnant and the speculation that would have surrounded that. She declared through her song that the powerful have been brought down and that the lowly have been lifted up. She had a vision that was beyond her reality. She could dream big dreams. And she was bold enough to say yes when God asked something of her. And then we have Peter, who was probably still a teenager around the age of 19 when he heard and responded to God's call on his life. And we know that he was impulsive, he was ruled by his heart, and he gave these impassioned declarations. Um, and I know lots of people often relate to his kind of foolhardiness um, in the way that he followed um, Jesus. 
So let us learn from these beautiful characters that we read about in scripture. And let us give space for our young people to um, to be those impulsive, impassioned, bold risk takers um, that I think the church so badly needs at this time. And let us not grow so old or weary that we lose that youthfulness we want that youthful spirit, don't we? We want that childlikeness. And so I've got a prayer that I've um, created for us. Or maybe it's more of a blessing, I don't know. But let's maybe receive it in the in the way that I intend, that have to have hearts and arms and that are open to receive it all that God might um, have for us. So I've called it the prayer of adolescence. So although the emotional spark that has burned so brightly and intensely during our teenage years may have mellowed with age, may the vitality and meaning which it planted in us continue to take root. Although we find ourselves assessing risk rather than taking risks, may we also find the courage to know when a boundary needs to be pushed, when a wall needs to be broken down, and when an obstruction needs to be removed. Although our language may be more diplomatic and polite, may we never lose the cutting edge of speaking truth that challenges the comfort of the status quo. So may we have the nerve of Jeremiah, the vision of Mary, and the passion of Peter in our words, in our hearts, and in our actions. Amen. <laughs>